How's it going guys? In today's video, we are going to build a 1,800 horsepower capable turbocharged 427LS. This engine belongs to a standing mile gentleman that I raced with at the Texas Mile. He was actually the first guy that kind of gave me some tips and tricks to get my car over 200 miles an hour. So now it's our turn to return the favor and build him a radical LS combination. The foundation is going to be a Dart SHP Pro engine block. The Pro block is a little bit different. It comes with main studs standard for the billet steel splayed main caps, as well as we have upgraded this block to half inch head studs for extra clamping force because of how much power this engine will be capable to withstand. It is going to be a standing mile engine. So he will start at a standstill and go as fast as he can in one mile by himself for a top speed goal. So at the mile, horsepower is everything. So we're gonna build this engine to make as much horsepower as we possibly can and help it survive in a mile application. A couple things we needed to do. One, ring gap, bearing clearance, and the actual material science of the components we are using. The crankshaft is going to be a billet 4340 steel center counterweighted four inch stroke internally balanced crankshaft. The center counterweights are going to help give the crankshaft a lot more stability at very high RPM. Remember, it's a mile engine. Once he gets this thing in top gear, it's probably going to sit at around six to 8,000 RPM for about 10 or 15 seconds at the back half of the track. Whereas a drag race engine, it might only see that much RPM for seven to eight seconds as it goes through the gears. Whereas this engine is going to see that high RPM for this much power, probably about 25 to 30 seconds total for one pass. So very high RPM at about 1500 horsepower. So we opted for the center catawated crank. The next piece of the equation is a billet I-beam Oliver connecting rod. Again, this engine needs to survive. What's really cool about these rods is you can see these little lips on the side. These supports make the rod a lot stronger as it tries to get pulled apart by the high RPM force. These lips are going to help the center, I'm sorry, these lips will help the big end of the rod stay true to size and not distort the bearing. They have an ARP 2000 7 16 hardware and we are going to run 2.3 to 2.5 thou on the rod clearance. The pistons are a JE Ultra forging. So they have a gold thermal barrier on top of the piston again, because this engine will see so much RPM and so much horsepower for so long, this barrier is going to help the piston survive. It has lateral gas ports as well to help the ring seal, as well as a stainless steel top ring and a Napier second. It also has 200 thou thick tool steel H13 wrist pins for extra strength and support. The main bearing clearances we're going to run are 2.5 to 2.7. We don't foresee this block flexing pretty much at all, so the main bearings are about 1 thou per inch. However, the rings are about 31 on the top and 33 to 34 on the second. Again, a lot of power for a long time. That piston ring is going to get very hot and it's going to expand so we need to give it extra gap to make up that clearance. This engine is going to run our Smetting 11 degree CNC ported cylinder head. Our heads already have a very high temp alloy exhaust valve in them, so that valve will be perfect for this application. This engine will be a hydraulic roller. Um, with LSs, you can legitimately turn about 7,800 to 8,200 RPM with a hydraulic roller, no problem. It's also going to run a billet dry sump oiling system. Again, high RPM, long time. So everything needs to be as good as it gets. It's going to be 12 to 1 compression and run M1 methanol. Um, so that way there does not need to be an intercooler in the system for the turbo piping. It's going to run twin 80 millimeter turbos. And it's actually going in an old retired NASCAR chassis with, I think, a Liberty V-Gate 5-speed. All of the stuff, anything cool, this engine and chassis pretty much has it. So. We're gonna to get to work building this thing. Shay has already checked all the clearances. Everything is completely prepped. Oh, camshaft, that's the coolest part. 
So because it's going to be a big RPM twin turbo deal, this camshaft is 252, 258 duration at 50 on a 116 lobe separation angle and about 650 lift on the valve tips. So without further ado, let's put these beautiful parts inside this beautiful block and let's make a powerhouse.
The short block is fully assembled. Next step, we're gonna install the crankshaft position sensor and check the clearance it has to the reluctor wheel to make sure that we have strong RPM signal at high RPM. Quick recap on the engine, it's a billet center counterweighted four inch stroke crankshaft with Oliver billet I-beam connecting rods. We have a custom turbo grind camshaft 252, 258 on a 116 lobe separation angle and about 0.650 valve lift. We are gonna run a crank driven dry sump oiling system. So it's a fully billet oil pan with a three stage dry sump pump that bolts directly to the oil pan with a couple O-rings. So you have no lines connecting the pan to the pump. It's super well contained and nice and tight. For the pistons, we're running a JE Ultra 2618 forging. They have the gold thermal heat barrier coating with a stainless steel coated top ring, Napier second, and a standard tension oil ring. And everything is prepped and blueprinted and clearanced to handle about 17 to 1800 horsepower. This is the Dart SHP Pro engine block with studded billet steel, splayed main caps, and half inch studded heads. There it is, an 1800 horsepower capable LS427 short block with all the goodies. Dry sump system makes this thing look just freaking killer. He's gonna run his turbo drains straight into the timing cover. And then the dry sump pump will scavenge the whole oiling system back to the tank and then supply fresh pressure uncavitated to the engine and the turbos. Thank you guys for watching this video. In the next video on this engine build, we're going to install the top end and show you guys the air induction and valve train system to make this engine a standing mile monster. See y'all then.